So you looked up a CSGO movement tutorial because you saw that a commentator finished a movement map quickly and thought, well, a commentator can do it. So can I. And you're right, you can. And this is the place to be. That was me, the blast commentator guy at Launders, here to explain to you how to do air wiggling, aka air strafing, and other movement fundamentals so that you can play the CSGO Hub KZ training map and beat it quickly as well. Okay, so from the top, what is movement? Okay, movement is getting around the map, but what is good movement? Good movement, number one, quite simply, is getting from point A to B as efficiently as possible, and number two, as effortlessly as possible, so that you don't have to think about the execution when you need to get up on top of a box or fly around a corner. Good movement in competitive play is not about hitting 10 B hops in a row or strafes with perfect sync and max distance. It's just about knowing how to air strafe so that if it would be faster to go around a corner backwards, for example, to get you at a tight spot, you could do it without thinking. Or if you are blessed with the opportunity to hit a bunny hop, you can catch a timing and win that opening pick. Now in KZ, which is the CSGO game mode that combines all of the technical elements of movement and puts them into a map where people either challenge themselves to finish a map or challenge themselves to beat a map quickly, here is where you may have to pull off a multi-hop or difficult long jump that'll take you a few tries. But with this comes consistency in the competitive mode as well. For if you can hop into KZ and beat a beginner map quickly or beat a tough map at all, you'll find it much more natural to execute on movement in competitive that is much less demanding because it'll now be more effortless. So what are the technical elements? And let's make this as practical as possible. If you can understand how to air strafe, B hop and crouch jump, you can very easily teach yourself the rest. So let's get started with those. Air strafing is a mechanic in CSGO that allows you to go faster and farther than you can if you were to jump in a straight line. Now you might be wondering why wiggling left and right quickly is faster than to not turn at all. And to explain that, I would like you to imagine we were in a kayak. And the water that your kayak is floating in, stay with me, is the air in CSGO. Now if you were to paddle to go forward, let's say on the left side of your kayak, you will both go forward and drift to the left. And in order to balance that out, you would naturally paddle on the right in order to continue forward and gain speed and also straighten out. Now I'm sure that sounds simple enough, but when watching someone air strafe, we see the mouse movements, but what we don't see is the key inputs. So let's pay attention to the key inputs for a second. W, A, D, A, D, A, D. So that's right. If you noticed after running forward and jumping, you have to release W and literally forget W exists until you land at the end of your jump. I need you, once you leave the ground, to treat W like it was a bad grade you got on a test last week that nearly jeopardized everything. Forget it. And I'm telling you this because this is the hard part. Ironically, letting go of W allows you to have full control. Your muscle memory won't make this easy, but keep practicing until you're comfortable. It's like riding a bike, I promise. Now the second part of what we don't see is sync. After you run and jump, in order to gain speed, you have to synchronize your keyboard movement direction with your mouse movement direction. So if your first strafe is to the left, your mouse must also move to the left. When you switch to the right, you press right on your keyboard and look to the right. Every single moment that you either hold W too long after you jump or don't keep your mouse and keyboard perfectly in sync, you will lose speed. With no speed, you will gain no distance. With no distance, you won't complete jumps. And if you don't complete jumps, you can't be cool. It's that simple. The three absolutely undeniably most important parts about your long jumps are number one, jumping as late as possible. Okay. Because the ground beneath you is tons of free distance and units are very small in this game. The difference between the top long jumps of all time is just one or two units in total. I guarantee you will find a number of jumps that don't require air strafing and can be done simply by jumping late. And no matter how good you get, this will always be important. Number two, letting go of W. Once again, this is free distance. Your strafes mean less and less the more you do. Your first strafe, which is your most important free distance, can be completely ruined by letting go of W late. And again, it's much harder than it seems. So KZ servers can show you when you are executing on this well. Number three, sync, sync, and sync again. You can do extremely long jumps that can qualify you to beat the hardest KZ maps available with just a few strafes, five strafes or even less on most maps. Keeping your strafes in sync 
is much more important than adding strafes. Jump late, let go of W, and sink over quantity, and you will be landing some fantastic long jumps in no time. Getting frustrated is a huge part about learning movement because it's highly repetition-based. But remember, once you learn it, you will basically never lose the skill. So get started now. Next up is bunny hopping, aka B hopping. Now, if you feel exhausted from listening to that whole bit on air strafing, have no fear. That was also 90% of the B hopping tutorial as well. In fact, B hopping is just timing a jump in between your strafe jumps in order to maintain the speed that you gained while in the air. That's how Foon did this back in CS Source. So when bunny hopping, the two things you really need to know is no matter how much you practice, you will never actually be able to hit every single hop. But you can improve your odds of hitting a B hop by practicing and practicing with mouse wheel down because scrolling adds extra inputs and increases your chances of hitting a perfect hop. Using your scroll allows you to tell the game that you want to jump multiple times over a small period of time so that you can hopefully line up one of those inputs with the tick that you touch the ground. This is called a perf or perfect. If you don't hit it, you will hear a clunky noise and lose most of your hard earned speed. But luckily, the punishment for missing your perf isn't that bad. And sometimes missing your perf on purpose can help you control your speed a bit better on KZ or B hop maps. So it can be used tactically. The last practical movement tips I want to discuss are crouch jumping, head bangers, and ladders. Crouch jumping, put simply, is pressing crouch before you jump. In the Source Engine, this allows you to gain an extra two units of height and do jumps like this one on Mirage. It's unintuitive, but easily mastered. Some maps will have crouch jumps, and so it's important to be able to do this. Practice for a few minutes. Headbangers are a funny one. Now, I've been known to miss a cat jump or two, but something that people actually don't know about the Mirage cat jump, for example, is that you don't even need to air strafe to make it. Jumping as late as possible which is always just a good thing to do and improve at, is enough to get you from the window on the catwalk. Zero air strafing knowledge required. All you need to do is avoid bumping your head. Headbangers will exist on movement maps where you are forced to crouch, or they'll just be there ready to hit you down because you didn't look up. Another small but important thing to get used to. Lastly, ladders. Now ladders are not easy and can be incredibly dynamic and usually where most people stop learning. And funnily enough, I would say that learning air strafing for the first time is much harder than just improving at ladders. So the best thing to do is just jump on them and practice flying off. And I'd consider it advanced movement, but there are a few jumps on the CSGO hub map where you need basic knowledge of ladders. So I'll show you this trick. For this jump, for example, jumping across with a ladder that looks like this, simply keep your crosshair in the same position and run and jump holding left and forward to keep your speed. Once you grab onto the ladder and jump across to it, keep holding A and W and look up a bit to use the ladder to launch you across to the next platform. The ladder will just allow you to keep the speed you came onto it with and send you off on the exact trajectory you set your mouse. And that should be enough to at least complete this. After that, you'll start to get a feel for how to improve at ladders by angling differently and launching off and letting go of W on time. But that'll be for a more advanced movement tutorial that'll come out in the future. In our next video for mastering movement, it'll be at an intermediate level for CSGO, and we'll be going over every single jump type on the CSGO hub, one after another, uh, without just learning about the fundamentals individually. And I'll specifically show you how to do these jumps. And then soon after that, we'll do an advanced tutorial where I can show you more deep movement uh, techniques and the stuff that I used, for example, to complete my just about 30 second run on the um, on the hub map and show you what it looks like to try to implement some skips and to do things in a more optimized way. And it's really fun once you get to that level. And um, I promise we're not far away from it, just a few hours of grinding if you go ahead and try yourself. So I hope you enjoyed that and we'll be back very soon with the um, intermediate level tutorial and an advanced level tutorial. And of course, as always, let me know if you guys really enjoy the movement content, if you want more tutorials and if this really satisfied and helped with your uh, goal of learning how to get better at CSGO movement. So thank you for listening, subscribing, and uh, commenting. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm.